join us today on Full Drawn Pursuit. Uh, here we go. Today is December 17th, 2010. We haven't brought you a show in quite some time, and the truth is, it's just because we've been working. So, to catch you up, we're going to have to go all the way back to September 15th, which is the opening day of Missouri's archery season. Let's check in with everyone and see how we're doing. September 15, 2010, opening day here in Missouri. Um, I'm a little unprepared today. I have one glove. We forgot one of our safety straps. And we got in here a little bit late. But uh, it's a really balmy hurt morning. Lots of skeeters. We're having a great time. This doe, now this doe is she has got us pegged. The wind is actually right in my face, but it's been swirling around all morning, and she just knows something's up. So there she goes. She's leaving, right? seen her babies. Call me a wuss, call me whatever you want to. I don't shoot babies and I don't shoot mamas with babies. So here comes the babies. day here September 15th. Um, our wind keeps swirling left and right. It'll be, a, it'll be a great wind for us, so then it'll be a bad wind for us. We had a doe and a couple babies come in. Uh, 
they knew something was up. The wind was blow actually blowing our way at that point, but they, the wind that's been blowing out there, and they know they knew that something was up. Um, we're just going to get out of here. This is way too good of a spot to, to ruin, putting our scent all over the, the area here. So we're going to get out of here. We got back to the truck just in time. Our day got better. Then quite a bit worse. Patrick Clark has been working very hard up in northern Missouri. Let's check in with him and see how he's doing. It's about 84 degrees. And with scent lock, <laughs> insulated boots, I think I might just lose 40 pounds today. It's a possibility. see behind me there's the food plot that I'm hunting over we planted turnips soybean and uh, buck four oats. as you can see over by my trail cam where I've had thousands of pictures this summer it's just barren it's like a desert almost the closer you come to my stand it starts greening up now during the summer I had pictures of the turkeys laying down in there, tearing it up, dusting themselves. The deer were just all over here. It was like, I had several pictures of eight, nine deer feeding out here. It's just, it's almost, we almost have to fence it off. And that's actually an option that I'm considering doing next year is fencing this little field off. I've only been in the stand 10 minutes. Um, it's about 80 degrees. It's starting to cool off now. The sun's starting to set a little. And, uh, Fox just ran across the field there. Um, I've got two bucks and a doe coming in from my east. Just got a phone call from Mike Grubb. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, 
part-time cameraman for me. Uh, he's got a big buck that he's been after, uh, about a 150, 160 class deer. Uh, he put a put an arrow in him today, uh, kind of leery about the shot. I'm going to go up and give him a hand. Uh, don't look like I'm going to get in the woods myself again today. Uh, I, I promise sometime this year you'll, you'll see me in a stand with my bow in my hand, but uh, right now i got a good friend of mine needing my help, so uh, I'm heading three hours north to uh, see if we can help him get this deer and, and uh, help make his day. All right, see you soon. All right, guys, I'm here with Mike Grubb. Told you earlier that I was kind of giving him a hand here. Hopefully, we're going to be able to find this. Mike, uh, tell me tell me what happened this morning. Well, sitting in my stand, been covered up in bucks two days in a row. Yesterday evening, watched a hell of a buck fight. Uh, got in there late this morning, got in my stand. Uh, deer came down right across the trail. I've been watching him. Uh, got his picture took by my tra uh, trail cam right there and come right over, about a 14-yard shot. I think I hit him a little far forward. I uh, don't know. That's kind of why I called you. Come up here and give me a hand. Uh, well, so you've got pictures of this deer. He was, he was on your hit list then? Oh, yeah. yeah good. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, hopefully we can get in here and, and uh, get him hunted up here real quick and uh, show you guys uh, what kind of deer Mike's got up here on this property. All right. Let's Stay go. tuned. Well, Sam and Grubb didn't find the deer that afternoon. A few weeks later, one of Grubb's hunting buddies did catch up with the deer some 800 yards away from where Mike had originally shot it and killed the deer. He gave Mike a call to check and see if it was the same deer. Well, here he is. The uh, buck we nicknamed Paul from the uh, trail cam picks. We got one pick of him on the uh, back side of the property back on uh, July 21st. Uh, took, you know, look at the, the trail cameras seen the kickers off over here on the G2s, the other kicker off on this G2. I uh, got a good trail camera picture actually uh, 20 minutes before he came in and uh, I got my shot on him. Uh, we reviewed those pictures, seen the kickers. Uh, he did have his, uh, his brow tine on the left side over here. Uh, just goes to show you, you can put a, uh, put a good hit on one or a decent hit, what you thought was a good hit, and uh, they'll still continue on with their life. Uh, Michael here, uh, kind of glad that he got a shot in on him, I wish it would have been me. Uh, just a dandy buck, you know. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Know, my boy helped me recover him. I uh, made a, a good shot. It's a little back, but it was a double lung. Uh, shooting a two blade rage, uh, 43 yards. Uh, got down to retrieve the arrow, couldn't find the arrow. Went a little bit deeper in the woods. The actual arrow had passed through him and was stuck in a tree to, uh, 10 yards away. So, uh, you know, covered with blood. The deer only went 40 yards after we hit him. Uh, my son, you know, showed up to help recover him. Uh, you know, he, uh, my boy had said he thought that might be the deer that Mike had hit earlier. And uh, we had looked at some pictures of him and sure as could be, the boy rolled him over and it had the, uh, the hole in it from the three blade muzzy. So, uh, you know, we were fortunate enough to get into the crack of this buck and, uh, you know, move on now to maybe might get another one. Mike Grubb would have loved to have taken that deer, but it's awfully neat how his hunting partner ended up with the deer in the end. Well, thanks for joining us today on Full Drawn Pursuit. We have a lot of great video coming your way in the next few weeks. We greatly appreciate you keeping up with our season at FullDrawnPursuit.com.